Hey everybody, this is Perch, and uh, this is this may be kind of a weird video because, for, well, for, it's a weird video for me. I don't know if other people will take it this way. It may be a little dull. I don't know. Uh, but uh, to me, this fits into the realm of common sense. And uh, speaking of common sense, I like telling stories where I don't uh, come off particularly well. It's uh, maybe I think part of the reason is uh, is is th there's so many people that take weird shots at me from different places, and they usually get it incredibly wrong. They usually, uh, the stuff they, they decide to pick on is the most benign, stupid stuff there is. Uh, but here's a good example. So um, I met some people from, uh, for Emerald City, and we went out to dinner. And uh, I, uh, I, I, I'm just, you know, I'll, I'll mention, because I can't do it without this story. So one of the people that we went out to dinner with was, uh, was Sean. And uh, Sean Murphy, uh, we, we, uh, I have a... A general, I don't want to say anxiety, it's a wrong word, but this is a guy who knows cars and, and I think has a good sense of cars. So I'm like, I'm about to drive him to dinner. So I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm in my car and um, we get in and uh, we, we head over there and uh, we're, he notices, like we all notice, like my, my backup cam in the head unit of the car is all blurry and, and crappy and it has been for a while. Now, here's where I will say something embarrassing. I can't figure out where the cam is. Like, I can't figure out where in the back of the car. And I keep looking toward the top um, because I'm a moron, and I can't figure out where the, this camera is. So we get out of the car, and, like, I see Sean go around to the back of the car and just kind of, you know, wipe something near the, the, the license plate. And he's like, that, that is your cam. And then we get back in, and it's, like, crystal clear. And I, <laughs> I've been dealing with this for a year and a half. And, uh, and I'm, I'm like, all right, well, see, that's why Sean Murphy is such a good guy, by the way. He fixes your car. Even when you go out to dinner, he fixes your car for you. That's the, that's how that guy is, is absolutely amazing. But anyway, funny, funny little thing. Um, I, I'd like to think I was mechanically inclined, but where cars are concerned, I clearly am not. And I, it's about time to give up the, a big disappointment to my father. My father was always like, my father like built his own car when he was a kid, like literally built his own car. He got like a kid car and he, he constructed it. And, uh, he, he would always be like, come in let me teach you how a carburetor works. And I'm like, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm building a computer over here. And he, he didn't understand my world and I didn't understand his. And that's one of those regrets I have in life. But anyway, all right. So that aside, what I'm about to say, I think is, is common sense, but I've had a few people reach out to me, mainly people who are current comic creators, meaning people who had gotten money or are currently getting money from Marvel or DC, maybe image. That's kind of a different deal, but um, basically there's been a, I would say a steady stream of commentary around uh, people who are, are now suddenly more wealthy now that they have left Marvel and DC. And I think there, there's been some tweets that are there uh, around, um, I'm not sure. Somebody sent me a tweet. I don't know who this is from. Literally, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting here. I don't know who this was. I know I should know, but I don't know. But somebody posted a tweet basically saying that they were talking, I uh, guess it was, I was talking to my accountant and um, I'm making more money since I left DC and I had to explain that. And uh, this has been a tweet that's been shared around a lot. I know I've seen it, but I, I, I promise you, I do not know the name. I'm not just, not just forgetting on purpose. I don't know. Um, but there's this is off this has been used a lot as an example of why mainstream comics are you know, garbage and people should go out on their own. And so I've been asked a few questions about this like hey is this uh, is this the future is this what people sh is it truly garbage working with the mainstream going out on their own. And uh, th the answer is it depends on you. So this is uh, what I I've seen a lot of people making these kind of statements like Everyone who leaves Marvel and DC will make more money. And I, I wanted to say, not to poke holes in that balloon, but that's absolutely not true. It is true for some people, but it has more to do with the people than it does Marvel and DC. And, and so this, I need to explain this. There's plenty of people who work at Marvel and DC or who have left Marvel and DC and make no money or basically making all their money out of uh, GoFundMes, or maybe they just took a different job. So, for example, I mean, we can look at, uh, you know, you look at the case. It, it doesn't matter whether you leave Marvel and DC. There's plenty of people who have left Marvel and DC 
who are doing GoFundMes, who haven't been successful, who've left. Mags, uh, who has a GoFundMe, multiple GoFundMes now, um, trying to get money to make rent and other things. I mean, the, 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 the key is, you know, leave the mainstream, you will be rich. I've seen some people post that, and that's ridiculous. It, it actually, leaving the mainstream has, I don't want to say nothing to do with it, but, but yeah, pretty much nothing to do with it. It's more about you than about them. Uh, if you want to be successful, if you want to make a lot of money in, in comics or whatever, or whatever in your career, a lot of it is, uh, I, I mean, unfortunately, there's not a trick to it. The trick is you have to, to roll up your sleeves. You have to get to work. And if you're able to get to work, if you're able to come up with a concept, if you're able to research a concept that you think will do well, if you're able to market and promote that concept, if you're able to figure out an audience that will pay for what you do, and uh, lean in on that, and and you know basically, uh, just just promote that to the best of your ability. Then you'll do well. Um, if you just leave and expect work to fall into your lap, you will not. And it, it sounds asinine for me to even say it that way. But um, I've talked to enough people who kind of get in their head that if they just you know go out on their own they will make a million dollars. That's, that's not, that, that's, that's ridiculous. I know a lot of, not a lot of, I know several comic creators who get this idea that, you know, Marvel and DC in particular are holding them back. And that if they just leave Marvel and DC, then movie deals and other things are just going to fall in their lap. That won't happen either. It's, it's a hustle type world. You've got to go out and kind of make your own luck. And it's uh, particularly bizarre to me uh, when people, uh, you know, they, they neglect that. I think that, not, you know, it's a cliche, but nothing in life comes to you for free. If you want, if you're in comics and you're unsatisfied with what you get, and, and by the way, this goes to another thing that um, I think that a lot of the, uh, I, I don't know the best group. I, I really want to figure out a better term. Because too much already is described in mainstream versus comics gate. And the reality is, if you're not on Twitter, if you don't kind of follow those types of things, there's a good chance you would never know what comics gate even is. There's a lot of people who have issues with the mainstream who are trying to do things on their own who've never joined that particular club. If you if, if you listen to that group, they make it sound like they are the, you know, the only alternative, but of course they're not. There's tons of people out there doing stuff and, uh, it, 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 it has been and will be, uh, for a long time to come. It's, it's not just about, you know, that group or the other group. The point is if you leave the mainstream, um, and you want to make money, there's definitely options for you to do that. Many options, all of them require hard work. None of them is money just randomly falling in your lap. I think one of the big uh, stupid things that people get themselves into is that they they hear a bunch of stories about you know things that happen to people after they they leave the mainstream, and they listen to only the one super successful million dollar story, and they're like, "That's the route for me." Sounds great. But is that a viable route or was there a lot of luck or was it a, you know, unreplicatable scenario? In a lot of cases, when somebody is able to, you know, basically hit the jackpot after they leave a position, uh, it's, it, it only happens once. It's a unique situation or at least very rarely. You shouldn't bank your future on, you know, uh, basically getting lucky. That's a dumb, that's dumb planning on your part. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities to make cash. Uh, this channel has talked about several. I know there's lots of channels that have talked about them, but all of them require a lot of sweat. Really all of them. I, again, I know there's some people out there who have gotten lucky. They've been in the right place, right time, managed to luck into things. They, but, but that is an anomaly. That's not a business plan. A business plan is basically understanding what you're going to have to do to generate your own success, not, you know, magical, wonderful things happen. Uh, I feel very lucky. Every now and then people come to me and go like, why, why is your channel? Like this channel is doing really well past 25,000. Cool. 
That, I mean, that's great. It's just a number. I mean, the, the, the fallacy of that number, by the way, is YouTube tomorrow could dump half my subscribers with a push of a button. They could, they could do that easily. Any of these people. I view uh, every now and then I saw some, some channel, which was over 100,000, was doing this big, like, over 100,000 subscribers. I'm like, well, I mean, sure, but keep in mind, YouTube could take that away from you tomorrow, and you couldn't do shit about it. Like, you could bitch on your channel, but you could YouTube could pretty much ignore you, and you'd have to take it. You don't actually own that business. That's a, a number that you get. Um, I showed, I, I've told this story before, but I showed um, this company that, like, uh, hey, you know, they're like, oh, we need to get our YouTube. We, t- we promised our board we'd get our YouTube channel over a thousand subs. I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Um, I'm like, well, you know, here's a, here's a website. You can pay $50. And like, what? We've paid a marketing firm like $5,000 to come up with uh, Google ads and other things to try and grow that audience. I'm like, yeah, that's probably a better way to do it because you'll get engagement and you'll get people. But if if you know what is the what is the goal you're trying to get to? If the goal is I need this number to make my board happy, then here you pay fifty dollars to service over here. They'll give you a thousand subs. The end. Like if that's your goal, just do that. There's tons of them out there. Is it dodgy? Sure, but but that's that's you know that's way you could do it. Um, I think there's no success without hard work. It, really, there isn't. Some people have gotten lucky. Some people uh, have figured out a weird niche where they can, you know, get attention and money for doing very little. That's awesome for them. That's not the way the world works. That's not, that's not what's going to happen the majority of the time. Generally speaking, the only way to be successful is you got to, you got to have hard work and that hard work has everything to do with you. It's independent of Marvel or DC or any company like that. It's all dependent on you. You have to get it done. I think that too many people are, are too invested in this idea of, you know, I don't like the comics that Marvel and DC are putting out, so therefore I'm going to cheer for any kind of thing that, you know, hurts them. I mean, sure, that's that's fine. I mean, if that's how you want to spend your time, cool. But beating them means you got to put work in, not just hatred, not just dislike of their system, you got to actually work for it. If you don't work for it, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be one of these people who, who complains. So when you see these tweets of like, uh, I, again, and I apologize, I, I, I do not remember who put this out there, but um, whoever the person was who is making more money than leaving DC, uh, cool. But is the is a moral to the story you left DC or is a moral to the story you worked really hard once you left DC and you, you oh, I, I, I actually, I think I know who this is. Now, now that I'm, I'm putting it together with the company. Anyway, regardless, it's, uh, I guarantee if you look into it, it's about what you did, not what you left. Um, the, the key, the only factor in Marvel or DC and how they play into any of this at all is simply that if you, um, you know, if you're working really hard for a company, and the company owns everything you do, then a lot of your effort is, I mean, you, you can work really, really hard, but there's somebody in between you and your success, and that's, that's you know, Marvel, or it's DC. They're going to absorb a lot of your hard work. They're going to take that value for themselves. It's not going to come to you. If you have the wherewithal to do that hard work and capitalize it on on your own, then take out the middleman. Just do it yourself. Absolutely. Uh, but if you do not, if you need that, um, if you need that buffer, if you need that person in the middle, then whatever you do, don't go off on your own. You're gonna you're gonna make yourself broke if you go off on your own and you have no plan, no capability, no desire to work hard. There's many people out there for whom Marvel and DC or these bigger companies are. It's good that they're there because if they weren't there, the person would fall right on their ass. The you know, you, you have to have the right personality to be able to drive the right business. And if you don't, you're better off with that middleman who's going to you know, help keep you on the rails. I think there's several, you know, pretty major mainstream writers out there. Well, look, look I'll throw this person up. Kelly Sue DeConnick. I think, uh, you know, both her and Matt Fraction took off to do their own thing. They did uh, Bitch Planet. They did Sex Criminals. Neither one 
did particularly well. I think in both of their minds, they were going to big, big Hollywood celebrities, you know, driving IP, doing a great job. I'm sure they had some wonderful lunches. But at the end of the day, time, history, proved that they needed Marvel and DC to maintain their career. When they took those, those factors out of the equation, they didn't do as well. Some people do really well. Uh, Mark Miller has done great outside of Marvel and DC. He's figured it out. He knows how to drive his career. It's all in what you have. Anyway, there you go. So to me, this is all common sense, but eh, it is what it is. Thanks for listening.